he was an action hero, a cultural icon, a martial arts legend on the cusp of superstardom. So every Kung Fu man is trying to do that, to be soft like water and flexible and adapt itself to the opponent. Bruce Lee, a legend in martial arts and entertainment, captivated the world with his charisma and unmatched skill. A master of multiple disciplines, he performed incredible feats of athleticism and strength. Some of his techniques were so advanced, they seemed almost superhuman. Join us as we delve into the Bruce Lee moments that nobody can explain. The Dragon Flag, Bruce Lee's ultimate core workout. Bruce Lee, the legendary martial artist, was a master of not just fighting, but also fitness. He knew that a strong core was crucial for any fighter, and that's why he created the Dragon Flag exercise. This intense move is not for the faint of heart, but it was a key part of Bruce's training routine. So, what exactly is the Dragon Flag? Picture this, you're lying face up on a bench, gripping the bench above your head. Then you lift your entire body off the bench, keeping only your shoulders in contact with the surface. Your body is straight as a board from head to toe. And then you start raising and lowering your body, all while maintaining that rigid, flag-like position. It's an exercise that requires immense core strength and control. Bruce Lee was known for his ripped abs, and the dragon flag was one of his secrets. He would perform this exercise with impeccable form, his body straight as an arrow, his abs contracting with each movement. But the dragon flag wasn't just a vanity exercise for Bruce. He understood that a strong core was essential for generating power in his martial arts techniques. Whether he was throwing a punch or launching a kick, the strength and stability of his core allowed him to deliver strikes with maximum force. Catching rice with chopsticks, Bruce Lee's reflex training. Bruce Lee was known for his lightning-fast reflexes, but did you know he had a unique way of training them? Enter the rice and chopsticks drill. This exercise may sound simple, but it was a key part of Bruce's training regimen. The drill involved Bruce holding a pair of chopsticks in one hand and a handful of rice in the other. He would then toss the rice into the air and attempt to catch each grain with the chopsticks before it fell to the ground. It was a test of hand-eye coordination, precision, and speed. But why rice and chopsticks? Bruce believed that the small size of the rice grains and the precision required to manipulate the chopsticks would translate to better control and accuracy in his martial arts techniques. By training his reflexes with this drill, he was honing his ability to react quickly and precisely in a fight. And it wasn't just a party trick. Bruce's lightning-fast reflexes were legendary. In fact, many people believe that this rice and chopsticks drill directly inspired a scene in The Karate Kid, where Mr. Miyagi teaches Daniel to catch a fly with chopsticks. Too fast for film, Bruce Lee's speed. Bruce Lee is renowned for many things. His martial arts prowess, his philosophical insights, and his incredible physique. But perhaps his most impressive physical attribute was his speed. Bruce was so fast that he often had trouble being captured on film. This may sound like an exaggeration, but it's actually well documented. During the filming of The Green Hornet in the 1960s, Bruce's kicks and punches were so quick that the camera couldn't keep up. The producers had to ask Bruce to slow his movements down so they would be visible on screen. The same thing happened while filming Enter the Dragon in the 1970s. Bruce's kicks were so fast that they barely registered on camera, appearing as just a blur. The filmmakers had to resort to using multiple cameras and slow-motion filming to capture Bruce's lightning-fast moves. But it wasn't just Bruce's kicks and punches that were too fast for film. Even his facial expressions and reactions were so fast, they were hard to catch on camera. In fight scenes, Bruce could react to an opponent's move and counter it in the blink of an eye, faster than most people could even perceive. So, just how fast was Bruce Lee? It's hard to say for certain, but there are some incredible statistics that give us an idea. In one famous demonstration, Bruce could throw a punch from just one inch away from a volunteer's chest and send the man flying backward. This punch was timed at just 0.05 seconds, faster than the blink of an eye. The one-inch punch, 
Bruce Lee's ultimate strike. Bruce Lee is known for many incredible feats, but perhaps none is more iconic than his one-inch punch. This devastating strike, delivered from just an inch away, could send opponents flying backward with seemingly impossible force. He could generate an incredible amount of force in a tiny space, using his entire body to deliver the blow. It was like a coiled spring suddenly releasing, with all of Bruce's strength focused on a single point. To demonstrate the power of the one-inch punch, Bruce would often have a volunteer stand with their back against a chair. Bruce would then deliver the punch from just an inch away, sending the volunteer sprawling backward over the chair. It was a stunning display of power and control. But the one-inch punch wasn't just a party trick. It was a fundamental part of Bruce's martial arts philosophy. He believed in the economy of motion, in using the least amount of movement to generate the maximum amount of force. The one-inch punch was the ultimate expression of this principle. In fact, the one-inch punch was so powerful that some people didn't believe it was real. They thought it must be a trick, that there must be some hidden mechanism or technique that Bruce was using. But those who witnessed it firsthand knew the truth. The one-inch punch was a result of Bruce's incredible strength, speed, and precision. Two-finger push-up, a symbol of physical mastery. When it comes to physical feats, Bruce Lee was in a league of his own, and one of his most impressive displays of strength was his ability to perform two-finger push-ups. That's right, not just regular push-ups, but push-ups using only two fingers on each hand. Bruce was known to perform sets of 200 or more two-finger push-ups as part of his regular training routine. To put this into perspective, most people struggle to perform even a single two the amount of strength and control required to lower and raise your entire body weight on just four fingers is immense. But for Bruce, it was just another part of his daily training. This feat of strength has become legendary in the martial arts world. Many people have tried to replicate Bruce's two-finger push-ups, but few have been able to match his numbers or his form. Nunchaku Mastery, Bruce Lee's Weapon of Choice when most people think of Bruce Lee, they picture him wielding nunchucks with lightning speed and precision. The nunchaku, a traditional Okinawan weapon, consisting of two sticks connected by a chain or rope, became synonymous with Bruce Lee thanks to his incredible skill with the device. Bruce's nunchaku abilities were truly a sight to behold. He could wield the weapon with such speed and dexterity that it often appeared to be an extension of his own body. His movements were fluid and precise, the nunchucks whirling and striking with incredible accuracy. But Bruce's skill with the nunchaku wasn't just for show. He actually used the weapon in several of his films, most notably in the iconic fight scenes in Enter the Dragon. His nunchaku battles are some of the most memorable moments in martial arts cinema history. However, Bruce's nunchaku abilities weren't just limited to choreographed fight scenes. He was also known to demonstrate his skills in more casual settings. In fact, one famous story involves Bruce engaging in a friendly ping-pong match using nunchucks instead of paddles. According to witnesses, Bruce was able to control the nunchucks with such precision that he could return serves and volley back and forth with ease, all while the nunchucks were whirling around his body. The Eyes of the Dragon, Bruce Lee's Vision Quest. Despite his reputation as a martial arts master, Bruce Lee faced a surprising challenge throughout his career, poor eyesight. That's right, the man known for his lightning fast reflexes and pinpoint accuracy actually struggled with myopia or nearsightedness. For most people, poor eyesight would be a major hindrance in a fighting career. After all, how can you defend yourself if you can't see your opponent clearly? But Bruce Lee refused to let his vision hold him back. Instead, he found ways to adapt and overcome, turning what could have been a weakness into a strength. One way Bruce managed his myopia was by wearing glasses or contact lenses during training and fights. He understood that clear vision was essential for his martial arts practice, and he wasn't about to let a little thing like poor eyesight get in his way. But Bruce didn't just rely on corrective lenses. He also trained his eyes to be as sharp as his fist. He would perform eye exercises designed to improve his visual acuity and peripheral vision, strengthening the muscles around his eyes just as he strengthened his other muscles. Kicking Power Bruce Lee's Devastating Legs 
Bruce Lee's kicks were a thing of beauty and terror if you were on the receiving end. His legs were like lightning, striking with incredible speed and power. And when Bruce kicked, people flew. There are countless stories of Bruce's kicking power. In one famous incident, Bruce was sparring with a partner and delivered a kick to the man's chest. The force of the blow was so great that it sent the man flying backward, crashing into a wall behind him. But Bruce's kicks weren't just powerful, they were also incredibly precise. He could target specific points on an opponent's body with laser-like accuracy, striking vulnerable areas like the ribs or the solar plexus. To develop his kicking power, Bruce used a variety of training methods. He would spend hours kicking heavy bags, honing his technique, and building strength in his legs. He also practiced kicking from different angles and positions, ensuring that he could deliver a devastating blow from any stance. One of Bruce's favorite kicking techniques was the sidekick. He could deliver this kick with incredible speed and power, often using it to keep opponents at a distance. His sidekick was so powerful that it could break boards and even crack ribs. But perhaps the most impressive thing about Bruce's kicking power was the way he could generate force from a standing position. Most martial artists rely on momentum to generate power in their kicks, rotating their hips and driving through with their legs. But Bruce could deliver a devastating kick from a static stance, using his incredible core strength and technique to generate force. The coin trick, Bruce Lee's sleight of hand. Bruce Lee is remembered primarily for his martial arts skills, but he was also an accomplished magician. One of his most famous tricks was the coin trick, a sleight-of-hand move that left audiences stunned. The trick went like this. Bruce would place a coin in a volunteer's palm and ask them to close their hand around it. Then, with a flick of his wrist, Bruce would seemingly make the coin disappear. When the volunteer opened their hand, they would find a different coin in its place. It was a simple trick, but in Bruce's hands, it became a thing of wonder. His movements were so fast and so precise that even those watching closely couldn't catch the moment of the switch. It was like magic. But the coin trick wasn't simply a magic trick. It was a demonstration of Bruce's exceptional speed and dexterity. The ability to make the switch so quickly and smoothly demanded lightning-fast reflexes and a delicate touch. It was a skill Bruce had developed through years of martial arts training. The slap heard round the world. Bruce Lee's surprising strength. It's no secret that Bruce Lee was incredibly strong, but even his closest friends and students were sometimes caught off guard by the sheer power he could generate. One such incident has become known as the slap heard round the world. The story goes like this. Bruce was training with one of his students, a highly skilled martial artist in his own right. During a sparring session, Bruce delivered what he thought was a light slap to the student's shoulder. But the force of the blow was so great that it actually dislocated the student's shoulder, sending him to the ground in pain. Bruce was reportedly shocked and horrified by what had happened. He hadn't meant to hurt his student. He was just trying to make a point about the importance of proper technique. But the incident served as a powerful reminder of just how strong Bruce really was. To put this into perspective, a dislocated shoulder is a serious injury that usually requires medical attention. It occurs when the ball of the upper arm bone pops out of the socket of the shoulder blade. This can happen as a result of a sudden impact or trauma, like a hard fall or a car accident. But Bruce had managed to dislocate his student's shoulder with just a slap, a seemingly gentle blow that most people wouldn't think twice about. Of course, Bruce was horrified by what had happened and immediately apologized to his student. He helped him get medical attention and took responsibility for the incident. But the story of the slap heard round the world quickly spread throughout the martial arts community, becoming a legendary tale of Bruce's incredible power. Breaking boards with two fingers, Bruce Lee's finger strength. One particularly striking account tells of Bruce effortlessly cleaving a solid brick in two using only his index and middle fingers. The brick audibly cracked and splintered under the force of his grip. This extraordinary finger strength wasn't a mere party trick or camera stunt. Bruce's close associates and students attest that finger conditioning was an integral part of his rigorous training regime. He dedicated time each day to strengthening and toughening his fingers, often practicing on wooden boards or other solid materials. 
But why focus so much on finger strength? For Bruce, it was about developing total body power and control. He believed that by strengthening every part of the body, including the often neglected fingers, he could generate more force and precision in his martial arts techniques. And it clearly paid off. Bruce's fingers were said to be incredibly strong and resistant to pain. He could deliver strikes with his fingers that were as powerful as punches from a lesser martial artist. Kicking the heavy bag, Bruce Lee's leg training. Bruce Lee's kicks were legendary for their speed, power, and precision, and a big part of that was due to his intense training with heavy bags. Bruce knew that to develop truly devastating kicks, he needed to condition his legs and hips to deliver maximum force with every strike. To that end, Bruce incorporated heavy bag training into his daily routine, often spending hours kicking the bag from various angles and positions. But Bruce's heavy bag training was no ordinary workout. He used a specially designed 300-pound bag filled with metal to withstand the incredible force of his kicks. The bag was unlike anything else used in martial arts training at the time. It was a custom-made piece of equipment, designed specifically to handle the kind of power and intensity that Bruce brought to his workouts. The metal filling made the bag incredibly dense and heavy, providing maximum resistance with every kick. Bruce would start his heavy bag training with a series of warm-up kicks, gradually increasing the power and speed of his strikes over time. He would work on his technique, focusing on generating force from his hips and core rather than just his legs. Pulling power. Bruce Lee's incredible pull-ups. When it comes to pull-ups, Bruce Lee was in a league of his own. The man could perform feats of upper body strength that would leave even the most seasoned athletes in awe. And we're not just talking about your standard run-of-the-mill pull-ups here. Bruce took this exercise to a whole new level. For starters, Bruce could perform a staggering 51 armed pull-ups with ease. That's right, 50 pull-ups using just one arm. To put that into perspective, most people struggle to do even a single one-armed pull-up. But for Bruce, it was another part of his routine. But Bruce didn't stop there. He also set goals for himself to perform 100 consecutive pull-ups using various grips. He would mix up his hand positions, going from a standard grip to a wide grip to a reverse grip, all without stopping. This kind of variation not only demonstrated Bruce's incredible strength, but also his endurance and mental toughness. And if you thought that was impressive, wait until you hear this. Bruce could do a two-finger pull-up. This is a feat of strength that is almost impossible to imagine, let alone achieve. The Art of Dedication Bruce Lee's 10-Hour Workouts When it comes to martial arts training, few people can match the intensity and dedication of Bruce Lee. The man was a machine, pushing himself to the limits of human endurance day after day, year after year. And nowhere was this more evident than in his legendary 10-hour workouts. That's right. Bruce Lee would sometimes spend up to 10 hours a day training his body and mind, honing his martial arts skills to a razor's edge. These workouts were not for the faint of heart. They were grueling, intense, and utterly exhausting, designed to push Bruce to the very limits of his physical and mental capabilities. During these marathon sessions, Bruce would practice every aspect of his martial arts training. He would spend hours perfecting his punches and kicks, working on his footwork and balance, and developing his speed and power. He would also spend time meditating and visualizing his techniques, training his mind as well as his body. But Bruce's workouts weren't just about quantity, they were also about quality. He understood that true mastery comes not just from endless repetition, but from a deep understanding of the principles behind each technique. He would break down each movement into its component parts, analyzing every detail until he had it perfect. Fighting in the Streets, Bruce Lee's Early Challenges Long before he became a martial arts icon, Bruce Lee was just a teenager growing up in Hong Kong. And like many teenagers, he had a bit of a wild streak. He would often find himself in street fights and challenges from rival martial arts schools, testing his skills against anyone who dared to cross his path. 
These early challenges were a formative experience for Bruce, shaping his approach to martial arts and life in general. He quickly learned that real fights were very different from the controlled environment of the dojo. In the streets, there were no rules, no referees, and no second chances. One particularly notorious incident occurred when Bruce was just 16. He had gotten into a fight with a member of a local gang, and the gang had decided to take revenge. They cornered Bruce in an alley and attacked him en masse, hoping to teach him a lesson he would never forget. But Bruce was not one to back down from a challenge. He fought back with everything he had, using his lightning-fast reflexes and powerful strikes to fend off his attackers. In the end, he emerged victorious, but not unscathed. He had taken a few hits himself, and he knew that he could never let his guard down again. Revolutionizing the Fight Game Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do In the world of martial arts, there are many different styles and disciplines, each with its own unique philosophy and approach to combat. But few have had as profound an impact as Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do. Developed by Lee in the 1960s, Jeet Kune Do was a revolutionary new approach to martial arts that emphasized practicality, efficiency, and personal expression above all else. Unlike traditional martial arts, which often relied on rigid forms and techniques, Jeet Kune Do was all about adapting to the situation at hand and using whatever tools were available to achieve victory. The roots of Jeet Kune Do can be traced back to Lee's own experiences as a martial artist. Despite his incredible skill and dedication, Lee had become frustrated with the limitations of traditional martial arts. He felt that many of the techniques he had learned were too rigid and impractical for real-world combat situations. Jeet Kune Do emphasized practicality, efficiency, and personal expression above all else. Unlike traditional martial arts, which often relied on fixed stances and rigid techniques, Jeet Kune Do was all about being flexible and adaptable, able to change tactics on the fly to suit the situation at hand. One of the key principles of Jeet Kune Do was the concept of using no way as way, which meant that practitioners should not be bound by any one style or technique. Instead, they should be open to learning from any source that could help them improve their skills and achieve their goals. A Fight for the Ages Bruce Lee vs. Wong Jackman In the world of martial arts, there are few fights more legendary than the one that took place between Bruce Lee and Wong Jackman in 1964. The fight, which took place in Oakland, California, was a turning point in Lee's career and a watershed moment in the history of martial arts. The background to the fight was a dispute between Lee and the Chinese martial arts community in San Francisco. Lee had been teaching martial arts to non-Chinese students, something that was considered taboo at the time. The Chinese community saw this as a betrayal of their cultural heritage and demanded that Lee stop teaching outsiders. Lee, however, was not one to back down from a challenge. He believed martial arts should be open to anyone who wanted to learn, regardless of their race or background. And so, when Wong Jack Man, a master of traditional Chinese martial arts, challenged him to a fight, Lee accepted without hesitation. The terms of the fight were simple. If Lee lost, he would have to stop teaching non-Chinese students. If he won, he would be free to teach anyone he wanted. And so, on the appointed day, the two men met at a kung fu school in Oakland to settle their differences once and for all. What happened next is the stuff of legends. According to some accounts, the fight lasted a grueling 20 minutes, with both men landing heavy blows and showing incredible endurance. Other accounts suggest that the fight was over much more quickly, with Lee overwhelming Wong with his speed and power. One thing that is clear, however, is that Lee emerged victorious. Despite facing a larger and more experienced opponent in Wong, Lee was able to use his signature speed and agility to outmaneuver his foe and secure the win. The Iron Palm – Bruce Lee's Hand Conditioning Bruce Lee's hands were more than just instruments for delivering punches and strikes. They were weapons in their own right, conditioned through years of intense training and practice. This conditioning is often referred to as Iron Palm Training, and it was a key part of Bruce's martial arts practice. 
Iron palm training involves repeatedly striking a surface with the palm of the hand, gradually increasing the force and duration of the strikes over time. The goal is to develop not only strength in the hand and forearm, but also a level of toughness and resilience that allows the practitioner to deliver powerful blows without injury. Bruce was known for his dedication to iron palm training, often spending hours each day conditioning his hands. He would strike heavy bags, wooden boards, and even steel bars, gradually building up his strength and toughness over time. In addition to his iron palm conditioning, Bruce Lee was also known for his incredible hand speed and striking ability. His punches were like lightning, capable of delivering devastating force in the blink of an eye. And a big part of that was due to his intense hand training. Bruce's hand training was a multifaceted approach that involved not just iron palm conditioning, but also speed and accuracy drills, as well as strength training. He understood that to be truly effective in a fight, his hands needed to be not just tough, but also fast, precise, and powerful. To develop his hand speed, Bruce would often practice punching drills, working on delivering rapid-fire strikes with maximum efficiency and minimal wasted motion. He would focus on relaxing his muscles and generating power from his core and hips, rather than just his arms. At the same time, Bruce worked on developing his accuracy, practicing striking specific targets with pinpoint precision, he understood that in a real fight, a single well-placed strike could be more effective than a flurry of poorly aimed punches. To build strength in his hands and forearms, Bruce incorporated a variety of exercises into his training regimen. He would perform knuckle push-ups, squeeze grippers, and even use a device called a Kung Fu dummy to practice striking and grappling techniques. The results of this training were impressive. Bruce's hands became incredibly strong and resilient, able to deliver powerful blows with minimal risk of injury. His knuckles became thick and calloused, bearing the marks of the countless hours he had spent conditioning them. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.